<clears throat> what is going on everybody we are live here on YouTube headed to the Lone Star Rally uh, for those of you who don't know it is in Galveston Texas kind of the last big like national rally uh, for the year here in America and uh, I'm on my way sitting at the hotel waiting for Miss Ashley to meet up with me and we're gonna ride out uh, that direction in the morning so just waiting for a few people to join on it looks like we got a few bruno what's going on how you doing welcome to the page so on my way to the lone star rally and i picked up some new wheels and i thought i'd share it with y'all and uh, maybe just do a little discussion about the wheels because it seems to be a really hot topic online which frankly i was a little surprised that it was this hot of a topic online but uh who out there can guess what i have sitting behind me to ride into uh, into Galveston on. We will be at the Ciro 3D booth uh, Saturday from noon to one. Uh, that is going to be uh, the Ciro 3D, you go to Ciro3D.com, you check them out, or just go to my website, Adam Sandoval Rides, and you can click on the, my sponsors, and you can find Ciro 3D, and you can come meet up with myself, Ashley, Scooter, and of course, my new wheels that I picked up today to head over there. Oh, uh, you think I got the Challenger? They just released it a couple days ago, man. They, <laughs> I don't think the Challenger's available for a while. Oh, yes. Got your patch today. Glad to hear it. What is it? What is the bike? Here it comes at you right now behind me. It is the new Indian Challenger. 2020 performance bagger, if you will. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to put a few more miles down on it. I did about five... Uh, 100 miles on it up the uh, California Coast Highway 1 about two weeks ago. And uh, I'm going to put another 500 miles on it here this weekend, maybe a little more, and uh, see what I think of it and give you guys the full review. I've yet to give you a review. I gave you uh, some stats and facts and a couple of my opinions on it on a video uh, most recently here on YouTube if y'all have not seen it. But this is, uh, this is it. So picked up that beauty today I was told I don't know how accurate it is the first one delivered in the United States which I was pretty excited for so but we're gonna have it down in Galveston if y'all want to check it out meet me at Ciro 3d uh, and uh, or catch me uh, stopping by the law Tigers everywhere I can but I'll be down in Galveston with this bad boy and y'all can get a good look at it so I'll take some questions if y'all got some questions I know there's been a lot of talk so let's let's see what we got for questions here Oh, Dixon, yeah, man. I like Dixon flannels, no doubt. Uh, ride wheelies off that thing. <laughs> yeah, you probably could. No doubt about it. So right now, you can see I got the windshield all the way up. It is a power windshield. It is a fixed fairing bike like the Road Glide. The power is good. Uh, they say 122 horse. Uh, my sphincter dyno says maybe 115 I don't know, hard to say. Um, fuel range. Uh, my Harley's at home. I still have a Harley. I see someone saying, why no Harley? Still love Harley, still have a Harley. But today I'm, I'm running this bad boy. Uh, fuel range. Well, it's six gallon tank and I'm not full. So I got 190 miles on the range, but it's a six gallon tank. It's got, uh, you know, some neat features. You can see them. It's also got this LED Mohawk uh, Indian headdress on there. You can kind of see, I don't know how well you can see, but the LEDs, it's like my screen's kind of messed up. But you can see the LEDs there. The new Metzler tires made specifically for this motorcycle. Um, and of course it's got the, uh, the locking saddlebags, which is a big deal to me, man. I, I just stopped at the mall and I just, you know, locked my camera and stuff in there and walked in. I mean, it's kind of nice not having to jumble around down in the saddlebag. So this is nice to have standard on all your bikes. I think it's, that's pretty cool. All right, let's hear what we got today. I'm gonna start reading. MSRP, I think they, uh, I did a video on all of this. I think the MSRP starts at 21.9 um, for the, lowest model and uh for the dark horse like this is uh like 20 28 7 or something i think but don't quote me on that
You okay? So Ramblin Rodeo says you seem to be more infatuated with Indians. Oh, and now why is it gonna Indians than Harleys now? I don't get it. You became who you are. Why we follow you because of HD? Well, Ramblin, if you follow me because of HD, you're following me for the wrong reason. Uh, I'm a motorcyclist first, and uh, I like to ride, and I like to support my troops. I like to support my first responders. I like to meet cool people on the road. I like to feel the road, and uh, you know, that is uh, all motorcycles. Truth be told, okay, and because I get this a lot with the Indian thing, and it gets a little tough, okay, for me. Uh, truth be told, before I left to every Harley Davidson dealership, uh, which took me 20 months, I brought hundreds of thousands of bikers through their front doors, uh, put millions of views of videos of traveling the country on their motorcycles. I mean, really, I, I, I did a lot for Harley Davidson out of my own pocket because I love Harley Davidson. I loved them then, I love them now. Um, I will always, always own a Harley Davidson. There's, there's no two ways about it. But before I left on that trip, before I sold everything I owned to fund that trip, I, uh, I had Harleys, I had Hondas, I had, I had multiple motorcycles. And I wasn't a, just a one brand, eat or die this brand, uh, there is no other motorcycle. Th that was never me, I was never that way. I, I always loved Harley, I always had a passion for Harley, but I always had a passion for the sport and the performance and these things. So to answer your question, um, I did break some records and do some awesome stuff with Harley Davidson. Uh, and you know, the, the bottom line is, is once I finished that, Harley Davidson came aboard and asked me to ride their motorcycles exclusively and they offered to pay me money to do so. Um, and, but they wouldn't pay me all of it, so I took some of the payment in motorcycles and then I ended up giving those motorcycles away to veterans. Uh, but needless to say, they told me I was never allowed to be on any other motorcycles. If I even was caught with a picture with my leg over another motorcycle, they'd cancel my contract. Um, and so that's why you saw exclusive Harley Davidson stuff for a year and a half after my tour was because they, they tied me down, they made me do that. Now I don't have that tie down. I'm allowed to do whatever I wanna do. If I wanna ride a Harley today, I ride a Harley today. If I wanna ride a Honda today, I ride a Honda today. If I wanna ride an Indian today, I ride an Indian today. Uh, that's just the way it is for me now and it's really a better spot. It's really more who I am than, than anything. Um, I do enjoy working with Indian. They do help me out in different ways. Uh, my contract for them uh, financially for 2020 is, is not a thing. It's, it's just uh, working together to show you all the sport and they make it easy for me to work with. If Honda was like, hey dude, come pick up a, a Goldwing and take it for a ride and show it to everybody, I would, I would be on it tomorrow. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about the motorcycles. It's about sharing the motorcycles. Um, not necessarily just the brand. And why am I about Indian so much lately? Well, frankly, because they're making badass bikes, bro. I mean, people people say, uh, you know, Indian or Harley, Indian or Harley. To me, it's not that simple. Uh, Indian and Harley both have their place. For me, Harley has a place because it's nostalgic and it's classic and, and, and it reminds me of my uncle. And it is uh, just something I grew up wanting as a kid. Indian, has a place with me because they're fun and their performance and they're uh, built well and they're just a lot of fun to ride. So it's just, you know, it's just two different things. This is a performance bagger. Uh, you know, people are putting $6,000 into their road glides to try to make them into what this comes factory. It's just a different, and, and that not everybody is doing that. Some people don't want performance baggers. Some people just want to cruise and tour. So, you know, it's just two different uh, styles and there is no right and there is no wrong so that's <laughs> my short answer if you want the long one we'd have to do like a, uh, a podcast or something the seat uh, the seat is uh, <laughs> I ride a huffy and what best answer of the entire uh, stream I do believe um, the seat is is a factory seat so listen man Anytime, like this will be one of my complaints when I do my full review, is the seat. The seat's not that great. It's nice for a factory seat. It looks nice. It's got nice angles. But, you know, the problem is a lot of guys and women get into a showroom and the first thing they do is they walk up to the bike and they touch that seat. And if it's not soft, they're like, ugh. So factory always puts overly soft seats 
which ends up leaving you sitting on the pan of that seat, on the frame of the bike essentially, um, on a long ride. So seat is always a major upgrade. I don't know if I'll be making a seat for this bike, but there's a lot of good companies out there that I'm sure are. Yes, I've still got the dark horse. Actually, Ashley's gonna be riding that this weekend because we still got some buttoning up to do on her Road King. So she's got a Road King. If y'all haven't seen the video, go look. I put a new fairing on it and it's pretty sick. And uh, But I got some buttoning up to do with some blinkers and some things like that and I haven't got it done yet um, because I've been just running crazy all over the country. So uh, she's gonna ride my dark horse. I'm gonna ride this and of course, I'll let her take this for a spin too. Yeah, I just didn't want to, I was done, uh, you know, the, to be honest, I didn't uh, cancel my contract with Harley. Harley canceled her contract with me because I had a hurt shoulder and couldn't ride the super long miles without doing some trailering. Um, and so they just decided, there was a lady up there, her name was Heather in corporate. Uh, she's no longer with the company, but she just didn't like me. She told me that when Harley Davidson has uh, celebrity riders, it's people like Jay Leno. And so she just wasn't, uh, she didn't, she didn't believe in like actual riders who like just get out and ride. And that's my thing, man. And I think that's a good segment for, um, for, uh, you know, my, my, my Brembro break. Everybody loved that in my last video. Uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a journalist. I am not a, uh, you know, master of knowing all the, the engineering and all this stuff. I know what I like. I know what works but I'm more of a rider. I just like to get out and ride. And I think that's why people like to hear from me and shoot, I'm gonna make lots of mistakes. There ain't no doubt about it. But uh, nonetheless, I know it works. I know what it feels like on the road. I know what uh, works for me. And so that's, that's what I go with. Uh, Derek, well, I don't know if that's the truth or not, but you know what, they didn't really go wrong because they still got me, right? And that's what they told me when they let me go. They're like, no matter what, you're still gonna produce content for us and we're still gonna get exposure through you. And they said, if you go to Indian, they said, everybody's just gonna drop you and hate you. And I just said, you know what, um, I just don't believe that to be true. Yes, I'll lose some, but I don't think people nowadays, as many are like, uh, we only like you depending on what kind of shoes you wear or what kind of motorcycle you ride. I think the majority of people uh, are about the sport, are about helping our country, are about uh, doing things together. So, you know, um, I took that chance and uh, sure I lost some followers online, but I gained so many more and I'm happy. You know, I'm happier now than I ever was because a little leak, I got another different motorcycle that I'm gonna be riding here coming up, completely different brand. Um, and I'm pretty excited about riding that one too because if you've read my book, Inside My Helmet, you know I wrote a whole chapter on it when I was touring on my Harley because I took this brand of motorcycle up into the mountains and had a great time. So if you know about that, I might be, might be riding one of those in the very near future. Let's see here, what other questions we got? How does, how does this bike on touring? Well, uh, touring this thing is an absolute machine, man. Um, that is one thing I have to hand it to this bike on. The suspension, the frame, the motor, uh, the way the GPS is set up, the stereo, uh, all really is premium uh, touring machine. This is the kind of machine you can jump on, rip all the way across the country, have a nice smooth, fun ride, and then you dump into some mountains and you can just shred them. And uh, it's a performance bagger. It's not for uh, guys who are just into touring and cruising and seeing nice and easy. It's not, it's, that's not the bike. I mean, it'd be great for it with a trunk added or something, but um, that's not its market. They are going after the number one selling motorcycle market in America, and that's the Harley Davidson Road Glide. So they're producing a bike to compete with it. They made their changes to it that they thought could make it better, and they put it on the market. Um, that's what it is, and that's why I get upset when they're like, oh, they copied. I mean, listen, here's another fact for you. Harley Davidson was not the first motorcycle to come out with a fixed fairing, not even close. Um, they put out their fixed fairing and it looked similar to other ones, but they put their own twist to it. And uh, that was the, 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 the fairing. You know, I also heard someone say in a video recently that Harley Davidson came out with the blacked out motorcycles and then Indian copied them. Truth be told, uh, the custom builders were building blacked out motorcycles Harley Davidson saw an opportunity to create a motorcycle for it and they capitalized on it. They built the bike from the factory the way people were wanting them on the street. 
it was a good play by Harley, but they copied the custom builders. <laughs> they didn't invent that. And uh, then Indian also put out a blacked out bike, also copied the custom builders and put out an OEM bike for people. So, you know, OEM, you know, to, 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 to assume that Harley invented that is, is not right. Were they the first OEM to put it out? No. Uh, there were other manufacturers who were doing blacked out bikes way before them. But, uh, you know, they were the first, uh, they did it before Indian, but to say Indian copied them because they did it first when they were actually copying somebody else, just all seems a bit uh, stretched. It looks like you're just uh, becoming kind of a bully and trying to pick uh, fights with people. And I'm not into that, man. I'm, I'm into helping one another and loving one another. And um, so when I hear that, I'm kind of like, eh, is it a road glide copy? Ah, it's got similarities to the Road Glide, there's no doubt about it. It's in a fixed fairing American V-Twin Tour family, no doubt about it. Um, and it's Indian's first step into that space, no doubt about that. But that being said, yes, it is It is made to compete with the Road Glide, there's, there's no doubt about it. But a copy, eh, I don't know, man, there's quite a bit of difference here. Mainly the engine, the frame, the suspension, the brakes, the GPS, the body lines on the the fairing itself you know it's got these really sick like like real deep body lines to it uh, the headlight is nothing like theirs um, the front fender the headdress I mean similarities for sure uh, that isn't gonna change anybody who puts out a motorcycle to compete in the mer in this type of space is gonna have some similarities so that's that's my piece on that uh, and it's okay if you think it is there's nothing wrong with that too I'm I'm okay with that but to call it a copy, I mean, you're really stretching because listen, every manufacturer in the world copies one another, takes each other's ideas and then tries to improve on it. That is how we get innovation. That's how we get ahead in the world. So, you know, this is a performance Vega. It's got an inverted front suspension. You know what I mean? A liquid cooled motor. Now, if Harley puts out a liquid cooled motor with uh, inverted suspension, are they copying Indian? I don't think so. I think that they are seeing a market that's needed and they're building a bike for it. And um, they're gonna compete against Indian for that space. Just like Harley is putting out a uh, dual sport, Harley Davidson. Are they copying BMW? Are they ripping BMW off? Is it a BMW copycat? No, it's Harley seeing a space that's hot right now and building a motorcycle to fit those and to, to you know put it in the game. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. I think it's, uh, I think it's smart business. Yes, Hondas are liquid cooled. I mean, it's it's nothing new. People compete in the sports car business. People compete in the supercar business. People compete in the pickup truck business. People compete in the motorcycle business. It's it's the business. Let's see what other questions we got here. Shocks, yes, shocks are great. So this has. Uh, this has actually a, a cast aluminum frame, which I'm a big fan of, and I think eventually Harley will go to that as well. Um, they've already gone to it in their soft tails, and I think it was a very smart move for them. Uh, well, they didn't go to cast aluminum, but they did go to the monoshock. So uh, this is a cast aluminum monoshock frame. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I think it's a far superior ride uh, on a monoshock than it is tool shock. Two shocks. I think they did a great job by killing the Dyna and going to the monoshock soft tail. I think it's a better performing motorcycle. I think that goes for these baggers as well. This is a better performing uh, frame right now. So I like that. The shock on the back is a hydraulic adjustable Fox shock. And the um, the front is a uh, inverted uh, up, upside down, some people call it, you know, monoshock. Some people are asking for close-ups of the radiator. I'll give you one of those. Let me flip you around here. There it is. So that's the radiator. Oh, you see that puddle light underneath it right there? That's pretty neat. So I just walked up, it picked up my key, and then it lights up underneath the bike like that. So the radiator fits in pretty good. It's pretty aggressive looking. It's pretty clean. It fits into the frame nicely. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that that is tucked in there. I think the rims are nice, the tires are nice. There's your Brem Bro. Brembro. If you're a bagger bro, you can call them Brembro. If not, they're Brem, Brembo. I always have a hard time. I have always had a hard time saying that. It's a tongue twister for me. 
Uh, so there you go, suspension. What else? What else we got? The weight, I don't remember the exact weight. I did look at it. I believe it is like 30 or 35 pounds lighter than the Harley Davidson Road Glide, if you want to compare. Um, but I don't remember the exact weight. And I don't want to. I don't want to quote you on the spot. I'm sorry, but I will get that information and put it in a video for you. There you go. 831 pounds. Power and torque compared to Harley. Well, from factory, it's going to be quite a bit more power and torque. Um, but what I think is most interesting is the uh, RPM range where that torque and power comes in. Really, it's above 4,000. Really, 4,200 uh, RPMs is where I've seen the power come in. I'm just giving away my whole bike review right now, but that's okay. We're hanging out and talking. Uh, 4,200 RPMs is where I see it start to come in, and then it goes right past that 5,500 uh, RPMs. So it's a higher RPM power range. Um, and I happen to like it there. I like to run my engines a little bit higher. I toured the entire country. I did one trip 88,000 miles on a five speed. So I was always running high RPM. So I'm kind of trained for that high RPM. Therefore, um, I like the RP higher RPM. And I like it better when you're on the interstate and you're gonna bang through past a semi or something. You don't have to worry about running out of RPM. So I like it better. Uh, the one thing I really didn't like about the 111 Indian was how quick uh, the power band dropped off at low RPMs. You had to almost short shift the bike. That was one of my biggest complaints about that bike. So this is the exact opposite and uh, I like it. RPM at 80, I'm not sure, I'll, I'll take a look. I'll take a look when I'm riding it tomorrow. I don't have issues with wind buffeting. I think, you know, one thing I will say about this fairing is I think it is a little bit wider and a little bit taller than the road glide fairing. Um, so it gives you, it really does give you a pretty nice air pocket behind there. I haven't noticed that. That along with an adjustable windshield, you know, you can just, uh, you can just, let me flip you around here. You can just um, control that here up and down the windshield. That helps also with that wind. You can just adjust it just like that. So that's pretty nice. What else we got? What other what other questions we got up here? Sorry, you guys got to throw them at me again. I know it kind of lags up there. How about a shout out to the tenters during the bring it home? You damn right I'll give a shout out to the tenters during the bring it home. Y'all are hardcore. Way to go, man. Congratulations. I, I know firsthand what it feels like to be tenting like that. So uh, way to come together to help bring that world record home. I'm absolutely ecstatic about it. And, and that's just it. People are like, oh, well, you don't, you know, do hard. I'm like, man, we just broke a world record for Harley. I did like 30 and 30, 30 videos in 30 days all around Harley Davidson. So it's not like I'm, bro, I just, I just, I like to ride and I like to share the different technology out there with people. And I'm no journalist. I'm just a rider who happens to have the ability to share it all with y'all. And some companies recognize that and, and make it easier for me. That's, that's all it comes down to. How do I like the handlebar position? Yes, it's six speed. Um, the handlebar position's all right. I had them roll these up a little bit when I picked it up today. Uh, I had them roll them forward to stock. They're all right. I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure what the aftermarket will do with these handlebars, um, but they're all right. They're a little buckhorned for me. They were a little low from the factory for me. Um, I'd like them back another inch or two, frankly, because I'm trying to sit up straighter. Um, it helps with my neck and my shoulder, but, uh, yeah. I wear sunglasses at night. That's right. And just in case you didn't know, these are my signature Adam Sandoval ASR glasses. And we've got a patented magnetic arm to these things. So when you take it on and off your helmet, you just set them on your tank and you don't have to worry about them falling down and melting on your exhaust or anything like that. When you come home, you just stick them to the fridge. Uh, I don't know, is this metal? We'll see if this is metal. It looks like aluminum. Oh no, that's metal. You come home, you just stick them to your fridge. You know where they are every day. The dog's not chewing on them. Kids aren't playing with them. Uh, yeah, so I wear my sunglasses all the time. It's kind of my signature, if you will. 
Uh, Harley has, nothing beats a Harley, I heard him say, and you should listen earlier to my breakdown between Harley and Indian. But, uh, you know, Harley definitely has its place on the road, guys. I'm not an anti-Harley dude. I love Harley. It's actually okay to like multiple brands. It, I, you know, it's, it's okay. I have, uh, I have three, four Harleys in my garage right now. Grow my beard? Maybe I will. I have been growing it a little bit. I was going to shave it tonight. The weather overlay on the GPS. I haven't got to play with that yet. I think it's a really cool technology. I think it makes perfect sense. I'm not exactly sure how it all works. This is stuff I'm still learning on. And that's why I want to take it on this trip and then do my full ride review after. Because I just want to play with some more features. I want to test some more things out. I want to learn a little bit better. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the deal there. VMAX 1700, I'd love to try that bike. I see someone say, I own a Harley Davidson Road Glide, can't wait to test it. And that's exactly right, man. It doesn't matter, dude, just ride. If you could get one of each in your garage, man, power to you. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to just pick one. Um, if only one bike is, is, is the situation you're in, then, then yeah, unfortunately you do have to pick one, but it doesn't mean you have to hate the other one that you didn't pick. You just pick which one speaks to your soul. You know, is your soul about the nostalgia? Is your soul about the performance on the road? I mean, to each their own. Riding my kicker? I did ride my kicker. I got a little something wrong. I think maybe a carburetor issue with it right now. I need to get into that and figure that out. Yes, that motor is wicked cool looking. I saw someone say they really like the look of the motor. It is a beautiful motor. I do like it. And I know somebody's gonna say something about 1901. And here's my piece on that, man. I, I feel like sometimes people are just looking for reasons to hate um, because they can't find anything better to break apart and they just feel like they need to poke or bully. Um, but the reality is uh, 1901 is Indian's birthday. And no matter who buys their patents, no matter who buys their logo, no matter who buys their name, no matter which company is running Indian, is irrelevant. You can't take away someone's birthday. Just because you're broke down, out of commission, uh, on hiatus, uh, shut down, none of that changes your birthday. 1901 is that motorcycle's birthday. And, uh, you know, they advertise that. I don't think anywhere do they suggest that they've been running continuously since 1901. All they're suggesting is that that Indian brand was the first motorcycle brand and it was so here's the other side of the engine it is pretty cool it is a good looking engine i mean it's just i mean it, when you look at the here let me flip you around when you look at the uh the cylinders and, the, and just the the way that they're built and the lines that is something that indian has done really good. Even the way like all oh, this is casted, you know, they've always done a really good job, or at least recently, done a very good job at making them look very tough. I have I have liked that from day one with this bike. It just looks very uh it's just a tough, tough looking cylinder. What else we got here? Springfield's nice. I like the Springfield. I definitely say go with the 116 motor. Uh, well worth it. I think that's a way better motor than the 111. I think the 111 was a little underpowered, in my opinion. The 116 is a monster. You'll love it. Get my Indian custom painted. <laughs> start it up. All right, I'll start it up for you. We'll start her up. Now this is something you'll notice about Indian and the way it starts, for those of you who never started one. Normally, you would sit and you'd hold this button down to start the bike. One time and it runs until it starts.
here. I will definitely, definitely get you all some sound bites from uh, with, a, with a real microphone, but. I mean, it sounds pretty good. I will say I did when I was riding them in California last week, I did get the chance to ride the uh, secondary Dog setup with the intake and the exhaust, and it sounded much more like a traditional V-twin than uh, it does with the factory exhaust. So just food for thought. Yes, I can hear the audio at 80 miles an hour inside my helmet with the face shield down. So what other questions we got here? No, this is not the base model. This is the dark horse. Yes, I did talk about this. I did predict this. So when I got my very first Indian, I suggested that Indian come out with a fixed fairing motorcycle, that it would be their best move uh, into the future. And sure enough, they did it, scored for me. I also predicted in 2020 that Harley Davidson would come out with a monoshock frame for their tours, and I was wrong. So I was 50-50. I, was I am your biggest fan. Well, then you get a third Coast 621. Word. Thank you. Appreciate you sticking with me and just enjoying it. I am not perfect. I will never be perfect. I will make mistakes, but I'm a biker. And which one of you bikers out there don't make mistakes? Which one of you bikers out there are perfect? Because I've ridden with a lot of you. Some say I've ridden with more, shared the road with more motorcyclists than anyone alive. And I'm going to tell you, not one of them was perfect. So, <laughs> you know, I just like to ride. I like to share my life with you all. I like to share my experiences with you all. And, um, you know, if you all are ever over it and don't want to see what's coming out next from me or don't want to see what's happening next with me then then you know you can unsubscribe and that's cool too i appreciate your subscriptions uh great time to say if you have not subscribed please click that subscribe but you know what i don't want anybody to feel forced into anything i i want to ride motorcycles meet rad people see beautiful roads restaurants bars and help my veterans and first responders that's that's what i want out of life man so that's what i want out of this sport anyhow and i'm blessed enough to be able to do it the way I do it. When am I coming back to Ohio? Well, I'll give you a little leak. Uh, you know, I, if y'all are familiar with a very huge charity event called Rolling Thunder, they are, uh, they did their last year last year. It's like the 32nd or 33rd year, I think. Um, and it was their last year. They said they can't do it no more because Washington's just charging too much to get them in there. Uh, bikes are, uh, you know, they're not letting them sell their t-shirts or their donuts, which is how they pay for it because they, you know, donate the money. Um, it just has become too expensive and too difficult to operate. So they announced their last year, but Columbus, Ohio, this uh, year, we're going to be doing Rolling Thunder in Columbus, Ohio, and I will be there. I'm going to be part of it with A.D. Farrow, Harley Davidson. So um, you can expect to see me there. Uh, two Indians. The power is great. You're going to absolutely love the power. It's all in the top end. Most of it's in the top end, um, which is, like I said earlier in this video, where I like it. I like that power to be in the top end. I think it's, um, it's just what I'm used to riding uh, because I rode an old five-speed <laughs> uh, electric glide standard for so long that I just, I'm used to winding my motors out. So when that power's in the top end, I, I like it better. I, I never feel like I run out of the gear. What's the advantage to monoshock? You know, I don't, I, I'm not an engineer. I, I don't want to misspeak. Um, although it's nice when I misspeak because I get tons of comments because everybody corrects me. So it helps my numbers, right? Um, I used to actually used to do that. I'd go and I'd see an old Camaro and I'd be like, oh, look at this old Cutlass on my video just so that people would correct me. <laughs> it would add to my numbers and help it get out there. It's pretty funny and it's fun to watch everybody correct you. So it's all good, but um, you know, I don't, want to, I don't want to misspeak to that, but I can tell you one thing, I've ridden both and the Monoshock rides so much better. Shallon, well, thank you very much. We love you too, we appreciate you. Are the speakers outlined in Chrome? No, I've noticed absolutely no heat off this engine yet, although I have not ran it in real good temperature. So the speakers are, um, I would say definitely outlined in chrome. That, that looks like chrome to me. So I'm gonna say yes, the speakers are outlined in chrome. This is kind of cool, this is how you open up. So this is your gas tank, right? Somebody asked me about the gas tank. 
but this is how you open it up. You push a button here, and then it unlocks it. So it's a locked gas tank just by pushing a button, which I thought was pretty neat. Yes, I am excited about helping Rolling Thunder keep going. I think it is uh, absolutely amazing. I'm not sure about the Apple CarPlay. I don't think it has Apple CarPlay, uh, but don't quote me on that. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it does not. I'm just saying I don't think it does. Oh, did you see that puddle light? You see the puddle light down there? That's actually a light underneath the bike. I, I, I don't know why that gets me so much, but I just really like it. Yes, I'm hoping to work with Rusty to build uh, a badass, um, a badass challenger. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to work with Rusty on that. Glove boxes in the fairing is the next question. Yes, I'll answer that. So there is glove boxes in the fairing and uh, they're pretty deep too. So one nice thing about the fairing is they're not just pulping. You actually have to press, press them, then they open. And they're also on like a dampener, you see that? They're on a dampener so they don't like just spring. I mean, it's, it's, it's what you'd expect from a car if you bought a car, right? You'd expect that to be nice. But anyhow, look how much you can fit in there. I mean, I can fit like pretty much so it goes up to the uh, to the V on my tattoo there, so it's a pretty pretty long amount. I don't know what is that. It's, it's a pretty long amount. So that is on both sides. Of course, there's USB plug in there. You got another one over here. Same thing with the dampener. I like that. You know, push button to turn it on. Gauges above the GPS. I definitely like that. I think that was a nice addition. Yes, it has Bluetooth for your phone. Uh, the Dark Horse does not come with a highway bar, uh, but the Touring models, the base models, all of them come with a highway bar except the Dark Horse. The Dark Horse does not come with the highway bar. What's up, man? Ernest, thank you, thank you. I have not used the weather overlay yet. I hope to do so in the future. <laughs> 1080, you're too funny. So far, I do not believe there are any trunk options for it. I do intend to put a D&D &D exhaust on it. I believe they hit the showroom floors uh, like the 5th of November, but don't quote me on that. I rolled the bars forward just a little bit. Uh, I haven't done a lot of night riding on it yet, so I can't speak to the headlight. They are stock handlebars. That is an accessory port. How fast have I gotten? I've gotten it to 115 miles an hour. Uh, the braking feels very ample. It feels very good. Okay, I see, I see gears and gadgets on here. Now, if y'all don't follow gears and gadgets, Go give him a follow. He's a new upcoming YouTuber and doing a great job. I don't know how new he is, but he's upcoming. Um, do I need to ride back out to Moyers to collab? Gears and Gadget, yes, you do, my friend. And you got to hurry because I, November 15th, I'm going in for a surgery. So let's get together. The lean angle, uh, again, 
y'all don't quote me because I'm not positive off the top of my head, but I want to say it was a 31 degree lean angle, but I don't quote me on that. Ashley is on her way here right now. I'm at this hotel waiting for her. We are about to head to the Lone Star Rally in Galveston. I will be at the Zero 3D booth if y'all want to check it out. Also, if you just tuned in and you want to hear my thoughts on this versus the Road Glide and Harley and Indian and all that type of stuff, start this video back from the beginning because um, we had a really long and lengthy in-depth uh, conversation about it earlier in this video. Front hazards, I'll turn them on for you try here all right so in the in the dash they're there right on the front I think my lens is a little bit so in the that way That's the front hazards. And then of course the back is also LED from the factory. All right, what else we got? How does it compare to my one six? You know, um, the old sphincter, di <laughs> the old sphincter dyno um, says they're pretty comparable. Um, I think the 116 is going to be a little bit slower than this though. I believe this is faster than my 116. And the beautiful thing is that's right out of the box. So obviously, uh, with a good performance exhaust like D and D, um, it will, uh, hopefully be better. Let me see here. I think I, maybe I got to turn it on. Okay. All right. What's next? Criver. What's up? All right. All right, y'all. I've seen some of the options available from uh, Indian. It's mainly an air intake, some slip-ons, uh, floorboards, uh, things like that. Um, I, uh, I think that there's a huge lack. I think this is one of the things that Indian is hurting on. There's a huge lack of aftermarket parts. And I've actually been talking to my buddy over Rusty from D&D &D and said, hey man, you know, I'd like to design some parts for these things. Um, and Harley too, for that matter. So uh, I think he's gonna help me and I think we might put some parts to market, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I think my buddy Jeff from the Cat House might get involved too. So we'll see what happens there. That's a little inside leak. The windscreen's perfect uh, for me, but I will say that they do offer a taller one on their touring option. So, you know, kind of whatever works for you. And it is adjustable, electronic adjustable. I showed that earlier in this video, if you want to go back and watch it. My seat does not fit on it. No heated grips or heated seat from the factory. Uh, I don't know the seat height. That's another thing I'll find out for you all, but it does feel pretty low. It doesn't feel like the seat height's low, but I think the clearance is still pretty high. I think the clearance is actually higher than my Chieftain, but the seat height might be a little bit lower. So that's kind of the best of both worlds, if that's accurate. Not sure that it's accurate. I'll give Scooter a pet. He's up in the room right now. It's a little chilly out tonight. So uh, I left him up in the room. Yes, six gallon tank is a good thing. Ooh, man. Um, the bars are okay for my shoulder pain. They're not perfect. I would probably tweak, I will probably tweak, you know, the bars a little bit more yet. Can you turn the headlight off and run just the LED run lamps? I don't know the answer to that, but I will play with it and get you an answer. I think it's pretty comfortable the way it is. Uh, suspension's pretty good. Um, you know, you could always probably get more performance stuff. Um, but I think for a sport bagger from the factory, uh, I think that it is the best factory performing bagger when it comes to performance that I've ever been on. Um, you know, the, the, you know, and everybody's, you know, and listen, I had a whole conversation about Harley versus Indian earlier. And I think Harley's definitely owns the market on nostalgia and classic. Uh, but I think Indian is definitely owning the market on performance and technology. So, you know, teach their own. And, and the beautiful thing is some people like the performance more than anything. And 
other people love the nostalgia more than anything. So it's, you know, it's cool. It's okay. Snow down in Michigan, well, I'm glad I'm not there. Some people just love two wheels, I heard that. Come on, Scramble North. Yes, I've been to Washington, PA. I have ridden to every single Harley Davidson dealership in the entire country, and I did it in one single trip. I left home and rode uh, 88,000 miles till I hit every one. So I've been to pretty much every uh, decent sized city in America. South Dakota in the house, what's up? Uh, you know, I talked all about the seat and why they make them like this and how we should do it different uh, earlier in this video. So just flip back and you can go through that. I'm not gonna make those that are still tuning in go through it again. It does have drive modes. The drive modes are a little bit different on this one. So um, let me see here, I'll flip you around. So this is a little bit different than my Chieftain when it comes to the drive modes. It has, let it load. Okay. So it has this drop down menu here. And you've got sport, which is where I like to keep it, standard, and then rain. And then also traction control on and off. Adjust that down just a hair. Um, then also traction control on and off. So those are kind of the way the uh, sport mode works. And I do notice a big difference with it. It's not just gimmicky. Where is it built? It is built in uh, Minnesota. I believe uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, I believe, or close to there, but it's definitely built in America. It's an American motorcycle. The Indian on the front fender does light up. I'll show it to you again. So it's got kind of like a Mohawk LED that's in there. If you can see it. My camera's kind of glowing around it. It doesn't really glow like that in real life. It looks much cleaner. But that is the front head. The new Indian front headdress. I think it's super cool. And then these LEDs are kind of built in like that. So... So there's your answer on your LEDs on your front end. Can you do it without the headlight? The answer is yes. Okay, I got something I have to... I got something I have to read here. Five dollars from Bud. Paul, come to Washington, bro. Lots of us vets here would love to see you. Paul, let's... Uh, or Bud, let's put on a... Let's put on an event, man. Let's do something good. And I'll make my way up there. Of course, I got to be careful saying that because I do get a lot of requests for different events that I'm not able to make. Um, can't make them all, uh, but you know that if we plan it, you know, right and, and work right, you know, hopefully we could do something. Texas says hello. Hey, I'm in Texas now. I'm in Dallas here, Garland actually. I'm gonna go out and do some Halloween partying with the lovely Miss Ashley tonight. When she gets here, I'm supposed to go get us uh, costumes, and I'm kind of sitting here chatting with y'all instead. So, oh well. All right. Listen, y'all, this is where I'm gonna ask y'all for a favor. Y'all do me a favor. I take the time uh, and try to give you guys everything you want. And now I ask you for something. I have 208 thumbs ups on this video and those thumb ups make a difference on how far out they push my videos on YouTube. So if I could get that 210 now thumbs up to look more like 310, that would be awesome. Or maybe if we could make it 410, that would be even more awesome. Now we're at two, 49 it looks like 285 thank you all i appreciate it just those simple thumbs up those simple comments those simple shares all make a really big difference for me canada what's up in the house yes it is a hydraulic clutch it's a it's a they call it an assist clutch now i don't know i can't really tell much of an assist on it even though they're calling it an assist clutch but maybe if it wasn't assisted i would notice it was really really hard uh probably due to all the you know performance or something i don't i don't really know but um i don't really notice it that much lighter than any other clutch i've got so take that for what it's worth um i don't think there i mean yes cup holders floorboards things like that from cereal for indian but i don't think any custom molded parts just yet yeah i like it too 
Listen, y'all, I'm gonna give you one last look at the bike here, and I am gonna go get in. So this is it from the side. That's that new beautiful engine. I gotta say, I do think it is pretty sexy. Floorboards are nice. Shifter linkage is nice. Everything's molded very nice. The inside the dash, they do have the bigger six inch speakers, which I do dig. The gauges up and down, remove up and down windshield. The gas tank, kind of the look, can give you that look to it there. Okay, it's got the remote lock saddlebags, so you can do it with just a push button of a key. The key looks like this. Well, I got the plastic on that still here. Here we go, pull that plastic off. There you go. Key looks like that. Front suspension. Front headlight. That's kind of what the headlight looks like up close. I do like the flat versus the gloss. I think that's pretty nice. Nice bike. <laughs> Thanks, Very man. Very nice. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Wow. Beautiful. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's the 2020 Indian. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks, brother. They did a good job with it. There y'all go. All right, y'all. I think that is about it for me and the motorcycle. Um, thank you, thank you. I appreciate all y'all. How many? 479 thumbs ups on this video now. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. You all are awesome. Uh, I couldn't do what I do without y'all. I'm a very blessed man, living a very blessed life. Um, I didn't know it was gonna turn out this way, man. I, you know, I left, I sold all my stuff and went out to serve my country, uh, to you know follow my own motto, which is if you did not serve in the military, find time to serve those who did. Along the way, I found myself doing some pretty radical things on motorcycles that I didn't even intend, or I guess I intended, but I didn't realize how hard they were gonna be or what I had even signed up for. Um, but once I was in, I couldn't give up. I didn't stop because of all of you that pushed me along. So, um, and now all of you are here with me today. And uh, you know, I've got a beautiful woman, a great dog, uh, a garage with several motorcycles in it. And um, I am thankful and I, and I do feel blessed. I don't take it for granted and I will also tell you I will also tell you that um, that I only work with companies that I believe in and that I uh, stand behind and I'll never ever again, and this will, if you watch this video from the beginning, you know what this means. I will never ever work with a company again that uh, restricts me from sharing with y'all everything that is motorcycle and everything that is this country out there. So um, thank you all very much. Thank you, Indian, for uh, making, giving me an opportunity to share with everybody what you have. I mean, I think this is awesome. I appreciate all of you out there, Indian and Brandamp, for working with me. Um, and I hope all of you enjoy uh, the look at this motorcycle. Expect to see some videos going through Galveston and a full ride review coming up. I just have to put more than a thousand miles on it before I can honestly review it for you. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, y'all. Happy Halloween, and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Remember, uh, life gets tough. Sometimes people beat you down. There's bullies out there and people that want to tell you if you don't think like them, you're not worth the salt. But that is not the case. You just keep pushing forward no matter how hard it is, no matter who's holding you down, no matter what struggles you are dealing with in life. Remember that we are not quitters. We are the Americans and a bunch of other really rad countries out there too that support us. All right, talk to you later, bye.